Okay, for today, we'll just continue answering our systematic errors and then later we'll talk about accidental errors. So let's answer number six. The so number six, a line was measured with a 50 meter tape. There were two tallies, eight pins, and the distance from the last pin to the end was 2.25. Find the length of the line in meters. So L, 50 meter tape, that's your tape length. Okay, since there wasn't any other measure of tape length given, so you can consider that as your tape length. So L equals 50 meters. Next, there were two tallies. So two tallies, eight pins. Eight pins and then distance from last pin to end was 2.25. That's your partial distance, right? Okay, so we're just looking for the total length of your measurement. So can anybody tell me what does one tally mean again? How many pins is one tally? Okay. So you haven't done your fieldwork number two. Or entry yet. If you've opened your fieldwork manual number two and three, you'll find out that one tally equals 10 pins. Okay? So, let's see here. What's given? Yeah. So, again, one tally just means, you, just means you've accumulated 10 pins already. And then, one pin is equal to one meter length, or no, one pin equals one tape length. Okay, so tape length is a length of tape you used in order to measure one point to another. So, for example, you have two points here, A and B, right? And then let's say you use five meter lengths. So five here, and then you're going to measure another five here, and so on and so forth. So five is your tape length. Each time you reach five meters, that's one pin. Each time you reach five meters ten times, that's one tally. Okay? So you'll use this in your fieldwork number two and three. And then one tape length is given as 50 meters. So this can change depending on the problem. It could be 10 meters. It could be five meters. So just check the given. Okay? And then... To get the total distance, okay, so you just need to know the total number of tape lengths. Okay, which is equal to lengths. Number of tallies. So we have two tallies, and each tally is equal to 10 pins, and then we have 8 pins. So this is 28. So we have 28 pins all in all, and again, each pin is equal to one tape length. So we have 28 tape lengths. This means we used your 50 meter tape 28 times to measure. So therefore, total length Is equal to how many tape lengths you got and the measurement of that tape length which is 50 and then remember in the problem there was a partial distance there and that's for example again you have a b so let's say you use 10 meters and so this is 10 this is 10 then this is less than 10 Okay, so whatever this is, is your partial length. So it's just 10 plus 10 plus whatever the partial length is. So therefore, in our equation, that's just plus 2.25. Please solve. What's the answer? Okay, 
correct. Uh, Jochelle. Okay, so Reyes and Jasper. Gernes and Reyes. So please wait until I ask the question before you type in your answer. Okay, so it's 1,402.25 and our unit is meters. So that's how we compute for total length between two points using tape lengths. Okay, so you're not using the total stretch of your tape. Next, let's have Number seven. Okay. So number seven, a line 100 meters long was paced by a surveyor four times with the following data. Then another line was paced four times again with the following data. Determine the length of the line. Okay. So if you remember this, your fieldwork one where you're pacing between two points. First part is getting your pace factor. Once you know your pace factor, okay, you can determine or estimate the line, the distance between two points using your pace factor. So reading this, it's the same thing. The person was walking between two points and we're given number of steps. We're not given pace factor. So that is what we'll solve first. So we have a measured line, 100 meters. So let's that, write that out. So your given line, 100 meters. And then that 100 meters was, was measured or was paced with the following number of steps, okay? So therefore, we just have, if you remember your field work one, in order to get the pace factor, what you do first is get the average of all of this. So let's do that. So your mean number of pace, okay? So let's write uh, 142, 145, 146. And then that's four measurements, so over four. Please solve what's the answer here. Correct. Correct, Zyra and Zyra. Oh, you have two Zyras. Ortiz and Penoliar. So it's one forty four point. 625. So as much as possible, don't round off when you're solving. Okay, so 144.625. And then to get your pace factor, all right, that's just, so PF, it's your length, right, divided by your mean number of pace. So length is 100 over 144. Lisa, what's the answer? Okay, correct, Raymar, and again, Zyra. So, Bernardo Penoliar. Oh, pardon. Late and will be. Okay. Okay. So it's zero point sixty nine. Now for for pace factor. Okay. Uh, it's either two to three decimal places. 
So I'm going to mention it in the problem, how many decimal places you need to use for the pace factor. So for this case, let's try three. So it's 0 0.691, okay? And then we're not done. What we're looking for is the length of the line. So now you know your pace factor. So to determine the length of the line, you're just going to use that and then your number of steps. So same process. So let's get the mean number of pace here. So 893, 891, 895. Okay. What's the answer? Okay, correct. 893.125. All the choose. Correct, John and Maro. What is called the software? So it's 893.125, okay? And then to get the distance, that's just pace factor times mean pace, right? And therefore, we're using three decimal places. You're not going to store your value because the pace factor is meant for you to memorize. Okay, it's not something you just store in your head. So just use 0 0.691. Again, this is just for pace factor. Times 893.125. What's the answer? Correct, Michael and John. Acido crystal. Again, wait for me to ask the question. So it was 617.149 meters. Okay, and that's it for systematic errors. Do you have any questions so far? Please answer in the chat. Uh, Ma, means a pace factor. Always the decimal place lang po ang gagamitin. No, it's two to three. I'm going to mention it in your quiz. To what decimal should your pace factor be? Any other questions? Okay, great. So the next topic would be accidental errors. So let's talk about the difference between systematic errors and accidental errors. So systematic errors are due to errors in your instrument. So your tape, for example, your tape is too long or too short. And all of these errors can be fixed right, using the equations that we mentioned before, okay? So we just have to apply your corrections. And then any other error outside of that is your accidental error, so your human errors, okay? So when we have human errors or accidental errors, what we can do is just figure out the most probable value, okay? 
So before we get into that, let's talk about our three values here, your standard deviation, standard error of mean, and your most probable error. Now let's differentiate each. You might have encountered these terms if you had probstat already or probability and statistics in case you haven't because I'm not sure about your curriculum. But to remind you guys, standard error or rather standard deviation indicates how accurately the mean represents the sample data. Because if you remember, standard deviation measures the dispersion of your data, collection of data. So how much they deviate from each other, okay? So if they deviate from each other too much and you're just measuring one thing, then most probably your data set is not accurate. So standard deviation determines the accuracy of the mean, the average of all your data, yeah. or rather how accurately, accurately the mean represents your sample data. And then standard error of mean indicates how accurate the mean is to the true value. Okay. Again, standard deviation, because we're looking for the average, the mean, okay? Standard deviation compares the mean to the set of data, okay? How accurately the mean represents your set of data, that one value to your collective values. And then standard error of mean compares your mean to the true value. So how accurate your mean is to the true value. So standard deviation compared to the data set, standard error of mean compared to the true value. Okay. So there. And then most probable error is a bit more complicated, but that basically is the error where there is a 50% chance that the true error could be more or less than your most probable error. Okay, so kind of like the most distributed error that you can get. Okay. So that's it. So in order to use that, let's have example number one. So from the measured distances AB, we have the following trials. Again, we're just measuring one thing. And then we have different measurements due to errors. So let's first solve. Yeah, you have your probable error, standard error, and standard deviation. Now let's look at our equations. Standard de deviation is square root of summation of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. x is your value. x bar is the mean. n is the number of values. And then your standard error of mean looks almost the same as your standard of er uh, standard deviation. The difference is there's an n here. So we can say, okay, let me write that out. So we can say standard error of mean is just your standard deviation, right? And again, looking at it, divided by square root of n, because there's just an n here at the bottom, okay? So divided by square root of n, okay? And then, looking further, your most probable error it's just your standard error of mean, right? Multiplied by positive, negative 0.6745. So let's write that. Most probable error is just your SEM times positive, negative 0 0.6745. Okay. So there. That's your shortcut. So now let's solve for number one. Okay. As you can see, our equation for standard deviation requires x minus x bar. So let's do that. Okay, so let's write out our x. So 612.12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So that's your x, your measured distances. Oh, 
OK. And then let's compute for x bar. OK. So x bar is just the average of this. So you already know how to take the average, right? Please compute. What's the average? Yeah, correct. So correct, Alyssa and Kian. Ben, pangalan. Agalana. Okay. Six one two point sixteen. Okay, that's just sum divided by one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I'm not gonna show that anymore. Okay, so we got that because I need the x bar. Okay, and now let's compute. Okay, what is x minus x bar? And then we're not done. Look at our equation that's squared. Because I'm going to need the summation of that. So let's compute for each x minus x bar squared. Okay, so let's begin here. What's x minus x bar squared of 612.12? Correct. Um, Alyssa and Maro. Kasople Pagalan. So it's squared, so it's always going to be positive. It's 0 0.0016 or 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 3. Next, how about 0.14? Correct, Zyra and Angela, so Patugalan and Ortiz. Again, wait for me to ask before you answer. So it's zero point one, two, three, four, or four times ten raised to negative four. And then this is obviously zero, right? Because mean is also 0.16. Okay. And then how about 0.18? What is it? Correct. Greg, Gabriel, and then Kurt, Astadan, and Sampan. So again, point. And then finally, how about point 20? Correct. Correct, KB and Angel. Zalika. So Angel Escobar. So it's zero point. Take the sum, what's the final answer? Correct. Something. And oh. Sante and Ruben Ramirez. Colleen and Ruben, so Santa Ramirez. Okay, point zero zero four only. Okay, all right. 
And then, now, now that we have x minus x bar, again, what are we looking for? The following. Probable error, standard deviation, standard error. Now, we don't have to start at number one. You can start at number three. Because again, if you've noticed, uh, standard error is just standard deviation over square root of n. And then most probable error is just standard error times 0.745. So let's start with number three, standard deviation. SD. Again, that was square root of x minus x bar squared over 1 n minus 1. So that would be 0 0.004 over, and n is 5. That's 5 values here. Okay, please solve what's the answer. Correct, Jericho and Alexandria. Zero point zero three one six. Again, in your exam, I'll tell you to how many decimal places should you write your answer. Okay. Again, please solve that. We could be wrong. So don't just copy the answer in your handout. Okay. And then number two, that was standard error of mean, which is just SD divided by square root of N. So this is SD. So use the total value of SD divided by square root of 5. What's the answer? Okay. Correct, Jasper and RDL. So be are nice and lovely. Zero point. Oh, wait. Square root of n. Oh. That's correct. So zero point zero one four one. And then finally, we're looking for most probable error, which is positive, negative, 0 0.6745 SEM. Okay, please solve what's the answer. Correct, Geraldine and Gabriel, Gabriel, Sampan Lazaro. It's positive negative because of this. So positive negative. Zero point zero zero nine five. All right, that's how you do that. Okay. So again, these values represent how much your values deviate from each other. So it deviates by 0 0.0316. Standard error of mean, this is how much it deviates from the true value. And okay, your error, your actual error can lie either less than 0 0.0095 or more than 0 0.0095. And there's a 50-50% chance for each. Okay, So that's how you read that. Okay, let's move on. Next number. Okay. So now let's talk about 
most probable value. So we've talked about the error. Now how do we get the actual value? So these are our equations. We have two cases here. So the equation would be summation of Wx over summation of W, and we call that your weighted mean. Okay. And this is for single unknowns, meaning if we're measuring for only one thing, and there's several measurements for it. And then the second case is x plus or minus v. And this is for several unknowns, meaning we're measuring more than one thing. Or if we're just taking a single measurement, okay, that would be your case two. Where w, again, is your weight of observation. Weight of observation will differ again depending on our cases. x is the measured value, v is your residual, or the correction that you'll apply to your x. So to start out with, let's have case one. So case one is if we're given the number of measurements. So uh, for example, what we have so far, yeah, we have the number of trials, okay? And then number of measurements is how many times you got that uh, measurement, okay? So for example here, we have, we're just measuring one thing, line A, B, okay? We measured 612.12 two times. We measured 612.14 four times, and so on and so forth. And then we're looking for the most probable value of length AB. So for this instance, we have the following equations for W. Okay? If there's only one unknown, W is just equal to N, okay, the number of times it was measured. If there's a lot unknown, and W is greatest common factor over N. And then V is EW over summation of W. Remember, okay, for several unknown, okay, uh, this would be your equation. X plus or minus V, so we need V. Okay. And then weight would be equal to this, since to get V, we need W. So the question here is, uh, is this single unknown or several unknown? What do you think? This equation, which will we use? Single unknown or several unknown? Very good, Geraldine and Zelika, Angel and Lazaro. All right. So to, to know if it's single or several, just look at what's being measured. It's just line AB. So that's single unknown. Therefore, our equation for W equals N. And then since it's single unknown, this is the final equation for the value, summation of WX over summation of W. Okay? So again, since single unknown for this case, this is the equation for W. And then the equation for value, most probable value is this, the single unknown. And that is what we're looking for, determine the most probable value. So to solve for that, let's use a table again to make our solution organized. That's like what we did here. Let's write out x first. Okay, and then let's look. Our values are the same as before, 12, 14. Okay, we repeated it. And then let's also have this, the number of measurements. Again, that's your N. So N is 2, 4, 3, 5, 6. 4, 3, 5, 6. Okay. So that's our given. We're looking for most probable value. And then, since this is unknown, your W is just your N. So we can just note that as this is also your W, your weighted value. And then, 
So yeah, we have this equation here. And then looking at solving for FPV, that's summation of Wx over summation of W. So let's solve for each. Let's start with summation of W. So again, this is your W. So summation of W would be, please solve. It's just a summation of this. Correct, Colleen, and yeah, it's just a summation. Colleen and RDL, so Lapid Sante. So 20. And then the next thing that we need is summation of Wx. So let's do Wx. Right now. Okay. Let's start. What's Wx? Correct, Michael and Ruben. So Acido and Ramirez. It's one, two, two, four point twenty four. Okay. And next, you correct KB and Raymar, so Bernardo and Escobar. And then, wait lang, susulat ko pa, 2448.56. Okay, next. Okay. Joshua and Micah, Polycarpio and Reyes. That was one eight three six point forty eight. Next. Correct, Jan and Tian, Kiben Lahom. Okay, well, it's three zero six zero point nine. And then last. Correct, Gabriel, there are two points. Kana. So it's Jericho. As for then, I think two points can be done. Yep. Any problem. So, that's fine. Two points. So, who knows? That was three seven point two. And then what's the summation of WX? So just take the sum of this. Correct mark. 
and Carlo. Maksama na Villalobos. Ah, eh, yun lang. Carlo, but incorrect. Alexandria, Sorenzon, Villalobos. Okay, ba't iba kayo lang sagot? So let's check na. 1, 2, 2, 4, 4, 24, 2, 4, 4, 8, point 56, 1, 8, 3, 6, point 48, 3, 0, 6, 0, point 9, 3, 6, 7, 3. Okay. Okay, thank you. 3, 6, 7, 3, point 2. Okay, my bad. Okay. Kaya yung iba mali. Yes. Yeah, thank you for the correction. So it's one, two, two, four. Three point thirty-eight. Okay, and then we're not done. Again, what we're looking for is most probable value for single unknown. And the equation for that again is summation wx over summation w. So that would be Hey, what's the answer? Again, wait for me to ask before you input. Correct, Luigi and Era. Villa Lobos Ops. Six one two point one six nine. So that's how you get most probable error for single unknown. Do you have any questions so far? Please answer in the chat. Wala. Okay, great. Let's have number three. Okay, number three. Let's look at number three. Okay. So number three. Uh, The angles of triangle ABC were recorded as follows. So angle A, 77 degrees, B, 49, and C, 53. So we're looking for the most probable values for each. So it's the same as case one since we're given number of measurements, right? So this is still case one given number of measurements N. So now the question is, is this single unknown or several unknown? Correct. <laughs> Correct, RDL and Phi. Fajardo lobby. Again, wait for me to ask. Couple points coming. Who else? Mark, two points coming. Wells, Geraldine, correct, Lazaro, two points na din. Okay. Oh, Jerome, correct. Hill Bueno. It's several unknown. Obviously, because we have the measurements of three angles. So you're not measuring the same thing. So therefore, since it's several unknown, the goal now is to first get GCF, to get W, and then get B by knowing E. Okay, so let's do that one by one. Well, let's solve for W first. And W is GCF over N. So let's write out our given. 
again, to make our solution organized. Okay, so our given is your angle measurement. So 77, 14, 20 minutes, 49, 40, 35, and then 53, 4, 52. Okay, let's check. Okay, number of measurements, again, that's your N, 4, 3, 2. So unlike single unknown, where N is immediately your W, you have to solve for W first. Okay, and then to solve for W, you need to get your GCF. Okay, so can anybody give me the GCF of 4, 3, and 2? GCF is greatest common factor. So remember your math. Okay, very good. Kurt, Alexandria, Arendon, Astagan. We have two points. Rochelle, correct. Jasper, correct. And five here. We are in Correct, Sebastian. So that was Diego. Oh, oops. It's twelve. There is one factor of four, three, and two. It's twelve. So W is GCF. And then GCF again is 12. So, ah, wait lang. Is it correct? Is it GCF over 12? Uh, GCF over N. Not 12. Right. Okay, so I'm going to solve this since it's pretty easy. GCF is 12, so 12 over 4, that's 3. 12 over 3, that's 4. 12 over 2, that's 6. Okay. And then, after getting W, the next step, or next thing we have to solve for is your E. Because okay? you need that for your V. Right? Looking back at our equations. Okay. After getting W here, I'm going to use that W in solving for V, but before we do that, I need to get E. And E is the error in computation or error of measurement. And then to get that, okay. remember what's given, these are the interior angles of a triangle. Okay, right? Angles of triangle ABC. So these are the interiors. Do you guys remember what's the summation of the interiors of a triangle? Interior angles of a triangle. And what is it? The polar math. Summation of interior angles of a triangle. Very good, Sebastian and Michael. So many other points. Here we go. Proves. And then Angel to Canada. Okay, correct, Jan. So it's 180. Remember, summation of interior angles of a triangle is 180. So if you have a triangle here, A, B, C, A plus B plus C should be 180. Okay? 
So E is the difference between the summation of this. So let's check. What's the summation of this angle? Please solve. Summation of ABC. Whoa. Angle minutes seconds. So what's the difference? Correct, Jan and Marie de los Santos. Okay, may iba pa bang sasagot? Okay, since wala na, you get three. So it's one, 79 degrees. Okay. Uh, 59 minutes, 47 six seconds. 49 minutes, 50, oh, 47. 47 seconds. Okay. And then to get the error, what is the 180 is the true value. So error is true value minus measured value. So 179, 59. 47. Please compute. What's the answer here? No. Oh. Oh, you don't know how to subtract angles? Nope, it's not it. Give me your answer in either degrees, minutes, or seconds. Okay, very good, John. So, correct. John is the only one to get it. And then also Jasper. So Viernes and Lao. Okay, I'll give you points for three and the home four. Oh, my humabo. Correct, Gian. So it's 13 seconds. Okay, so how? So you can just use your calculator, 180 minus all of that. You'll get 13 seconds. Or if you're doing this manually, okay. If you add 13 seconds here, this becomes 60. And this will be completed as well. This becomes 60, and then this will become 180. So it's just 13 seconds, not one degree, one minute, 13 seconds, okay? It's just 13 seconds. And now that we have that, let's solve for V. Okay. Okay. So V is, let's look, EW over summation of W. So I have to get summation of W, so that's just 13. Right, so three plus four plus six, 13. V is EW over summation of W. Okay, so please solve for the first one. Considering E is 13 minutes, what's the answer here? I'll give you guys a minute to figure out how your calculator works for degrees. 
degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay, and then solve for this. E, so 13 minutes times 3 over 13. Correct, John. Correct, five. So far, though. And give chance to other side. So, five, correct. One more. E, W over W. E is 13 seconds. W is three. Summation of W is 13. So what's V? Okay, mga two points, pwede na ulit sumagot. No. Correct, Marie. So De Los Santos, correct? It's just three, okay? It's only three seconds. So you can just consider the seconds here as a unit. This would be the same as the centimeters. So three cm times W, which is three over 13. Ah. Okay. 13 cm, so 13 cm times 3 over 13, that cancels out, so you're left with 3. And then our unit is cm. Okay, in this case, our unit is just seconds. So 3 seconds, okay? I'll do the same thing. How about for this? What's our V? Very good. Uh, Mark and Angela, so Pato Galan and Julia Lobos. And then, so that's four seconds. And then finally, how about the third one? What's the answer? Yep, correct. Uh, correct, Jericho. And five and GM. So, Bongki, Daguna. Six. So six seconds. Okay. So now these are all the corrections per value. Okay. So let's start with actually solving. Part A, we're looking for most probable value of angle A. And then to get most probable value for something with several unknowns, let's go back to our equations again. And for several unknowns, it's x plus or minus v. So how do we know if it's plus or minus v? Okay, so we'll know since So the way that we'll know is it, is it plus or minus v by looking at our measured distance. Our measured distance is less than the true, uh, our measured angle is less than our true angle, which is 180. Therefore, to make the correction, let me ask you, should we, should we add or subtract this? Add or subtract. Okay. Correct, Zyra and... And Michael, so phenolier and acid. Okay. 
we add? So, 77. Okay, before you solve, wait lang. We add because it's not enough. We need to get this to 180. That's why we're adding our corrections. Okay? So, since it's less than the true value, I need to add to it so that this goes to 180. Okay? If this answer is more than 180, then I need to subtract because it's in excess. All right? And again, this is easy to add, so I don't need you, your guys' help. This is just 20 seconds plus 3 seconds. So final answer would be 77, 14, 23 seconds. Ganun lang. If we have a degree here or a minute here, then you also add the minute there. So let's say this is 1 minute 3 seconds. So that would be 15 minutes 23 seconds. Okay. That's it. So that's for first angle. Next. And as you can see, that was correct. Next value B and C. Okay. Next. Let's write it this way instead, angle A. And then angle B, again, since several unknown, that's just plus or minus B. And then we already know this is minus, uh, this is plus. So just copy that, 49, 40, 35, plus 3. So that's 49, 40. 38. Right. Um. Oh, my bad. A correction is four. Okay, yes, correct. Thank you. So, 39. And then finally, angle C, X plus minus B, oh, 53, 4, 52, plus 6. So that's 53, 4, 52 plus 6, that's 58. Okay, and then we double check. Yes, that's our answers, okay? So that's how you get most probable values for different unknowns, okay? So do you have any questions for number three? Please answer in the chat. Okay, good. No questions. Let's have number four, the second to the last problem for today. Okay, so for number four, that's a different case now. So in the event that number of measurements is not given, instead distance to a point of measurement is given, these are our equations. So your weighted mean is now GCF over D. If you're given is number of measurements, then W is GCF over N. Okay, for several measurements, and then V is E, W over summation of W. So same thing as before. Most pro Yes, most probable value is for unknown. So for example, one, we're only looking for most probable value of line AB. Here, most probable value of angles A, B, and C. So there are several unknowns. So now here, okay, point of measurement. So since there's a single point of measurement here, or rather there's a sing there's only one thing being solved for, this is for a single unknown. Our weight is GCF over D. And then if we have more than one measurement, it's uh, we're gonna use your V. So again to 
understand, let's have an example. From starting point A, elevation is 340.85. The elevation of second point, second point B is found. The root distance and elevation of point B are as follows. Okay, so we're given these measurements. And then the distances of your measurement. Okay? So, for example, to illustrate that, uh, okay, this is your point A, your point B. Elevation of A is given. We're looking for elevation of B, and there were three ways to solve for that. So this is by either differential leveling, which is a future topic for you. But for example, using root 1, a certain elevation for B was given or taken. Using another root, elevation of B was taken, and then another root. And then the distances of those roots were the ones measured as well. Okay? So that's our given. So let's write table format again to make things more organized. So first, 364.84. Next, 364.20. And then 364.37. And then let's call it D for our distances. First was 4, and then 2.5, and then 6. Okay. So there. We're looking for first compute the weight of root 1. So weight is W. So we're looking for W of root 1. Okay, so let's solve for W. And then let's check how do we get W. Let's look at our equation. According to this, W is just GCF over D. So no matter the situation, W is always GCF over D. Okay, so let's use that. And then GCF is greatest common factor. Previously, it was the greatest common factor of your number of measurements, but now it's the greatest common factor of distance. So can you, can you please tell me what's the greatest common factor of 4, 2.5, and 6? Very good, John and Michael. And Micah. Uh, no, not Micah. Sorry. Okay, so John and Michael. First call as a good. Very good. It's 60. Okay. So 60. GCF. Okay. So therefore, we need to compute. So again, I'm going to compute that. So 60 over 4, that's 15. And then 60 divided by 2.5, that's 24. 60 divided by 6, that's 10. So our answer for number 1 weight of root 1 is 15. Okay. Next, what are we looking for? Compute the weighted elevation of B. So that just means your uh, most probable value of B. Weighted mean is the same as your most probable value, as you can see here. Okay. Now, again, since this is a single unknown, right? We're only looking for elevation of D. The equation for most probable value would be summation of Wx over summation of W. So let's solve for Wx. Okay. All right, so since we're almost out of time, I'm just going to give you the answers, okay? So Wx, so that's just 364.84 times 15. That would be 54. 72.6, and this would be 8740.8, and then this would be 3643.7. And then we need the summation of Wx, and that is uh, 1785.7.1. And then we would also need summation of W, and this is summation of that, which is 49. Therefore, to answer B, your weighted mean, which is again the same as your most probable value, is just summation of Wx over summation of W. So 178 divided by 49, you'll get 364.43.
Okay. And then next, let's have number three. Number three, compute the error in elevation using root three. So again, remember error is the difference between the true value and the given value or measured value. So here it was specified using root three. So therefore the measured value that we'll use would be uh, 364.37, okay? So now what, what is our true value? Since there's no given true value, okay, what we'll use is our most probable value. Okay, again, listen. If the true value is given in the problem, use that. If it's not given, or if you can't solve for it, like for a triangle, your true value is the most prob probable value. So error, again, is the difference. So it's 364, your true value, minus your measured value. So 364.37. And the answer here is 0 0.06. Okay, and then number four, uh, compute the adjusted elevation of BM2 using root three. There's an additional problem here because if we read the whole problem or the whole situation along root three, 2.5 kilometers from A towards B, BM2 is located. And this is the measured elevation of BM2. 349.86. So I'll write that as my x. 349.86. Okay. And then we want to get its adjusted elevation. Okay. Again, just considering root 3. Okay. Using root 3. So how do we solve for that? We, we suddenly have a new unknown elevation of BM2. So in that case, that's a single elevation, but not just that. This elevation of point B was only measured once, right? And look here, single measurement. So meaning this is the equation that we need. Okay, again, elevation of BM2 was only uh, measured once. This is the only given. So that's here, your single measurement. So it's X plus or minus V. So now the goal is to get V. And look here, V is EW over summation of W. I need to get V, EW over summation of W. E again is 0 0.06. And then W, okay, so to compute for W, that's GCF over D. So GCF, which is the same, we'll still use the same, which is 60 over D. So D is distance for this measurement. Let's look for it. So 2.5 kilometers from A towards B. So our distance is 2.5. So this is 2.5 over summation of W, which is again 49. So it's the same. And this will be 0 0.029. Therefore, our most probable value would be x, again, plus or minus v. In this case, it's x. Hey, look here. Measured value, 0 0.86. Uh, sorry, measured value, 349. Actual value, 364. So we need to add. So plus. Also, another technique here is our error is positive. So this is add. Okay, so add v. So 349 plus 0.029, that's 349.89 kilometers. And by the way, I forgot to write our unit kilometers. Okay. And that's it. 349.89. Then... Uh, oh, let's speed run to number five. Or it's like I don't want to rush things, so I'll just leave number five for next meeting. So do you have any questions? Yes, E could be negative. Uh, okay. 
So for those who don't have a group yet, okay. Yes, E is true value minus measured value. E could be negative. The book that I recommend for this subject would be Surveying by Bessavilia. <laughs> Surveying by Bessavilia. Okay, and then for those who don't have a group yet, until now, you're going to do your fieldwork number one on your own. Create your preliminary data sheet using the values I provided under week one. Pass it to me. I'll sign it, give it to you, then do your own fieldwork report one. And then find your own groupmates because you have to do fieldwork two and three this week. Okay, since wala kang kakilala, I'll randomly assign you. Okay. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is already eight. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, I'm gonna assign you. Okay, again, uh, Kenneth, you're gonna do field work one on your own. And then for field work two and three, you're gonna join this group. Okay. See, no, look, that was group numbers um, one, three, five. So one, three, five. Okay, groups one, three, and five, please look. I'll add another member to your group. Group three. Okay. So group three. Okay. For Carlo, for his call, please take note. I'll add Kenneth De La Cruz to your group. Kenneth, coordinate with your group members. Okay. okay. Any other concerns? Yes, I've signed it already. Could you share your screen? Is it okay so that I can check what you guys see? Uh, RDL, is it okay if you... Yes, yes please share your screen. If you don't see your name in my Excel file sheet, don't worry. This is just a temporary class list because I got it from the first week. I'll eventually add the late enrollees. Okay, RDL. I'll disable screen sharing. Okay, let me. Okay, can you try now? Can you check my grades on the left? Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Okay, wait, wait long. Let me do something. Field work. Okay, give me a minute. Okay. Okay, can you refresh, please? Okay, there you go, and then click the speech bubble. I am there. See group four signed on the right side. On the bottom right side. Group four fieldwork one signed. Okay, not? All right. So for the other groups, ganun din. that's what you're gonna do. Okay. 
So go to my grades and you'll see it there on the speech bubble as well, or you can just click it. Reminders, deadline of fieldwork number one report this Friday. Deadline of preliminary data sheet of fieldwork one, uh, two and three also this Friday. There's no meeting tomorrow, okay, for field. Just watch the video I sent you and you use that time to create your preliminary data sheet. And then on Friday is consultation for any questions that you may have and such. Okay, so no meeting tomorrow, yes meeting on Friday, all right? So do you have any more concerns, clarifications? No more? Okay, so continue discussion on Thursday, field meeting on Friday, and then I think you have seat work or homework this Saturday. Just check the orientation PDF file for your schedule. Okay, so since you don't have any more questions, you may go. Goodbye, class. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome.